and uh, Brendan's prayer is going to facilitate excellence in our uh, academic exercise of the human test. And then uh, that's going to bless us immensely. We know that that prayer has already been saturated by grace. Amen? 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. Praise God. Great choice. All right. Lead us in prayer, my brother. Uh, Heavenly Father, thank you for this evening. Thank you for the chance to gather together as a uh, Christian family, as a Cornerstone family. As we uh, dive into your word, I ask that you be with Dr. Loggins tonight. Give him the words to share with us. Give him the wisdom. Give him the biblical scripture and strength to share that with others. And give us the ears and eyes to be open and the heart open to it, Lord. Therefore, we take it in tonight and give it to someone tomorrow. I ask for that strength and the opportunity to take those risks, Lord. I thank you for every individual sitting among us today. Uh, we are, are few but yet mighty. Hmm. And yet the impact we can have is a small group in the community of Sedalia, or even our own church, even our own homes, our own families, is uh, exponential. So I, I ask for that, Lord, and I ask for your help in that. Um, as we dive in tonight, once again, I just ask that your will be done here this evening. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Brian, and praise God. We'll keep floating the mic around so we'll be able to tape and so and so forth. Once again, uh, good evening to everyone. Hope you've had a great evening. Uh, Michael, you can pass the test off for us. Have the guys got the test and so forth? Everyone has that? Okay. If you have completed to return to, uh, to me the assignment you had, could you give that to Michael immediately? Very good. For those who did not do the assignment from that standpoint and you're here for the first time and you don't have that, then you can um, see, see Micah, and she'll give you a copy of that because that piece that's in the, um, the new journey is e extremely critical, extremely critical. And if you haven't, if you haven't turned it in, uh, we'll give you some grace, but we really need to have it by next week. Very important to have that. And for those uh, who do not have a copy, uh, Eunice is coming in right now, do not have a copy of that and so forth, could you give Eunice a copy of that too, if you will, um, and so forth, Micah, if you do that, if you don't mind, uh, for that, if you will, and, uh, and so forth. Um, and so, Eunice, you don't have to take the test because they, they have the notes and things to that, but the one on the new journey, you want to do that, and we'll sort of talk about that a little bit later on. Okay, the new journey one is very, very important. That's going to be the foundation to which we're operating in, because in making disciples, to keep it from being human-centered, if I sneeze a little bit, excuse me, from being human-centered as opposed to God-centered is like night and day. We don't want to operate in our own flesh, in our own ability. We want to be able to operate in the, in the freedom and the joy that Christ has given to us and the gifts he's given to us and so forth. So the, the new journey portion is, this, is the portion that's going to take you into an understanding of what it means to have, here's a phrase here, have a prayer life and not just say words. To have a prayer life and not just say words. Okay, uh, you have the uh, papers with you now for the, for the test, and let us begin uh, right now, and it's broken down for us a maximum of 200 points that's on the test. Ready, set, go. All right, very good. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Amen. You, I have no idea. I, I'll be listening to you tell it. Uh, Jim, I'll let you instruct me on that, okay? <laughs> Who all have finished all of it except for the writing? Except for the writing. Except for the writing. Except for the writing. Okay. What we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and give you the answers for the, the, um, the multiple, the, the A, A or D. Okay, we'll do that, ALC or whatever. And we'll give that to you, and then you can go back and finish your writing and stuff like that. So, <clears throat> anyway, um, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to walk through it and let you see. Uh, Michael, could you give Pastor a copy of the test, even though it doesn't have the answers on it? Make sure Pastor doesn't have the answers. He'll share them with other people. He'll be shepherding them. Okay, very good. And uh, we're just going to walk through and give you the AOD, I like that, okay? All right, beginning uh, with number one. Um, somebody holler, what, what is it? Is it A or D? It is D, that is correct. Uh, number two, A or, A or D? A, that is correct. 
Uh, number three, A or D? D. It is D. It is D. So that would be a minus 10 points, a minus 5 points off of whichever one you miss. And that's from 1 to 28. Okay. Uh, number four. Which one is it? A or D? Number four. It is A. Okay. Number five. A or D? It is A. Number six. A or D? It is what now? Which one? Which one? D. It is 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 D. All right. Uh, number now number um, uh, number seven is it A or D? It is A. That is correct. Um, number eight is it A or D? It is A. That is correct. That is correct. Uh, number number nine is it A or D? It is A. That is correct. Number number ten A or D? Which what it, what is it? What is it? What is it? It's A. It is A. Okay. <laughs> uh, number 11, is it A or D? It is A. Number 12, A or D? Is it, which is it? Which one? All the A's raise your hand. All the D's raise your hand. It is A. Uh, number 13, is it A or D? Okay. All the A's uh, said A, raise your hand. All the D's raise your hand. It is D. Uh, number 14, is it A or D? 14, A or D? It is D. Number 15, A or D? All the A's raise your hand. All the D's raise your hand. It is D. Number 16, is it A or D? Okay, all the A's raise your hand. All the D's raise your hand. It is D. Uh, number 17. Number 17. Uh, number 17. Moving right along. I'm ignoring that question. Number 17. Um, is it A or D? It is A. Number 18. Is it A or D? All the A's raise your hand. All the D's raise your hand. It is D. It is D. It is D. And uh, let me extrapolate that for you here. The actual issue, it says, I do not frustrate the mercy of God. I do not frustrate the grace of God. Just one word. Just one word. Makes it all false. Uh, number 19. <laughs> number 19. Come on, guys. Pastors here, y'all behave yourself. Number 19. Is it A or D? All the A's raise your hand. All the D's raise your hand. It is D. Uh, what I did was I replaced the word place. The word should be power, not place. Right power. Okay. Uh, number 20, A or D? It is D. Number 21, A or D? It is A. Number 22, A or D? It is A. Number 22, 23, is it A or D? It is A. Number 24, is it A or D? It is A. Number 25, is it A or D? Which one is it? All the D's raise your hand. It is D. Number 26, uh, A or D? It's quiet. There's a murmur in the house. A or D? All the D's raise your hand. It is D. Number 27, is it A or D? All the A's raise your hand. It is A. Number 28, is it A or D? It is A. Because that's the strategy that we are going to be employing in our evangelistic outreach. Now, for the rest of you who need to complete, go ahead and complete your, uh, your notes in there. And I'm going to talk a little bit while you're, while you're completing the rest of your, the portion of that and so forth and et cetera. Because that's basically uh, what I'm asking. The questions is on... Um, there's almost a three points week you're getting, but just go ahead and finish that. I'm gonna keep on working and talking while you do that. Okay. Now, what I like to do is to just come right off of right off of uh, this aspect of of one t four, one t four, one t four, which I'm praying that will become a cross him 
maybe a cross for us, Pastor Tim. One, the cross four, one T four. And one T four is Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. Now, to get to that point, what I like to do, I want to mention a couple of things. We're going to dive into water over here in a few minutes and, and walk through some things there. On the 8th, you can jot this down, on the 8th of this month, which will be next week, uh, we're going to be doing some things to get us ready to begin to go out and take what God has taught us and begin to share it with others and begin to evangelize into our community. And we have a community we're looking at right now, which is close at hand, uh, not right next door, Hawthorne. What's the other community now? What's the name of the subdivision again? Unit? Hunter's Ridge and... Walnut Hill, and, and within that geographical area uh, where there are needs and they're waiting on us to come and help them. On the 22nd, which is after we have the state fair, I've never seen the state fair, uh, been here one time, I heard it's a pretty busy place. So after the state fair on the 22nd, which is that following Wednesday, we will proceed to the field and we'll do it a combination of ways. We'll do a prayer drives for those who want to just drive and pray and so forth. Then we do prayer walks and also we, we also do some door invites, some door knockers invite as well. And uh, if we want to engage in conversation with others, we'll, we'll be prepared to do all of that uh, and we'll train us in that area as we prepare on the 8th and so forth. In the meanwhile, what I want to do is to walk us through some things that I think is quite critical in our understanding of rationale. Because rationale implies knowing why you do what you do. If we don't know why we do what we do, we cannot do that effectively. We have to have a right rationale, a right understanding. And if our understanding is erroneous, then our effort is going to be, uh, it's going to be fruitless. We're not going to be able to do what God would have us to do. We're doing it in our own strength and not in the strength of the Lord. So Wednesday night disciples, that's what we're doing here. And here's the question that, that I raised for us. I'm going to walk us through a litany of materials for us to unpack in our thinking. And you may not want to have to write all this down, but just sort of gather the, the primary thoughts, if you will. And that is this. Is Cornerstone Baptist Church ready to receive more babies? Are we ready to receive more babies? Are we really ready to go out to share the good news of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and receive more babies that are coming into our church? Are we ready for that? Is our heart ready to receive more babies? Now, these babies, that, that's babies that are messy. They're messy. They poo-poo all over you. All right? They're not trained as well as we are. They're not as good as we are because they're not at Cornerstone. They're not as excellent as we are. They, they are not as good as we are as Cornerstone. They're dirty. Uh, they are in Dorset. They are messed up. They're messy. And then they are filled with issues, problems, and sin. These are the kind of people that we're going to be reaching out to. Now, there'd be some of those who would know the Lord Jesus Christ They've accepted him and they want to be a part of the body of Christ and they may have been bruised, they may have been hurt, they may have gone through church issues in their life. We got to be ready to receive them as a part of our congregation. And that, that means not just being ready to go out there. I'm talking about getting ready in the congregation. There's some things we got to do here so when people come in, they can feel the presence of a church that really welcomes all people regardless to the condition or the situation of their life, okay? We got to be ready for that. The next thing I put down here is that at CBC, we are a perfect church with perfect people that are well-educated, well-trained, well-smart, real rich, and very special. That's us. Now, I've only been here a while. That's what I've seen. When I stand on Sunday morning, I look at all these well-educated, well-trained. I look at the, 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 the Pete, the, the Phyllis uh, uh, aspect. I, I, I see excellence and perfection. Have never made a mistake in his whole life. Amen. All right. Praise God. All right. 
Then I look at Jim. I say, oh my goodness, Jim should be spelled G-E-M, Jim. He is, he is a Jim because Darlene has trained him. I mean, I, I look at John and I say, Wilma has whipped him into shape. Praise God. I mean, these are perfect people in this church. So we, we don't want to have any issues. We don't want to have any problems. We, don't, we, we want to have, we don't have any issues in our church, none. I, I, I've, I've searched the pockets of people, I've gone through all kinds of stuff, and i figured out that, that, that Cornerstone Baptist Church is a perfect church that's special. Special. Very special. Very special. Very special. Very special. However, if we want to stop growing by addition, and begin to grow by multiplication. And this is where the biblical mandate comes in. When Jesus will make disciples of all nations, baptizing in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and the Lord, I'll be with you always to the very end of the age. When Jesus talks about that, he's not talking about addition. He's talking about the multiplicity of multiplication. Then, what must we do to take God's church to another level? What must we do? What must we do? That's the question that each of us must ask ourselves. What are we going to do to ignite a fire storm in our church that moves from the group that's here to begin to impact those on Sunday morning and begin to have conversations with those who aren't here that are not receiving what we're receiving, that we become the disciples that Jesus had, and they went back into their, into their hamlets and venues and places, and they began to prepare the soil for the seed of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ in the lives of other people. We've got to do that. How many of y'all have friends in the church that's not here? Raise your hand. Those are your disciples. Go get them. Amen. Sick them. CBC is a church, an ecclesia, the word ekleo means a called out assembly. God has called us out, ekleo, ecclesia, he's called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. We, 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 we were once in darkness, but the light of the gospel of Jesus Christ has opened up our eyes. We don't do the things we used to do. And I'm not, now let me be careful with that because we are not perfect. If there's anybody perfect, I want to ask them to leave and don't come back because you want to mess up the rest of us. So we still are in the process of becoming what God wants us to be. That is blessed with great preaching. We have great preaching in our church. We have great music, great worship. We have great people. We have a great community that we're in. And this is not blowing smoke. We have all those ingredients, but those ingredients can be locked and encapsulated in the church, and we'll never, ever do what God would have us to do, just coming to church every Sunday, patting each other on the back, hugging each other, and taking our friends out to lunch, and forgetting about those who's coming to visit with us, because they're not as good as we are. They're not as good as we are, so therefore, they have to pay for their own McDonald's meal. All right. Thus, since we are that great, like most dying churches or dead churches, we must be very careful not to have messy new folks to come to our church and mess up our good thing. Okay? So we don't want to get these folks. We don't want those folks to come in here. You can come, you can visit, but you just, we, we look, we don't need you. We really, our church is clean and nice and we don't want you coming in messing up the place, asking the wrong questions. <clears throat> now, you can visit, but don't stay, okay? You can visit, but don't stay. We, 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 we are an elite people. We are elite. We're special. Excuse me, special, 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 okay, special, special, okay? So, but most churches that think like that, they're either dead or they are dying, because they are not making room for the new growth to come in the church. And we can do that and be satisfied with our satisfaction, if you will. So at Cornerstone, we don't want, want, we don't want, drop the S, folks with issues, drop the S. We want good, clean, holy, righteous, special folks 
just like us. That's what we want. That's what most churches want. They don't want any, they want people that, that's, that has all of the degrees of a turkey in the oven, and the turkey is not even done yet, okay? So God is not interested in that. God, God is not interested in education. God is interested, jot this down, God is interested in obedience. Obedience. You never measure the level of your Christology by education. You measure it by the level of your obedience. Because we know enough Bible. Pastor could stop preaching today. We know we got enough Bible in us, okay, to do what we need to do. The problem is we just don't want to do it, okay? We just don't want to do it. But we got enough scriptures in us right now to turn this community right side up. Amen? So only mature people are the ones we want in our good church. Only good people. I went to a church one time and said, uh, who are you? I said, my name is Robert. Oh, good. I'm going to shake my hand. Uh, yeah, good to see you. I saw your car out there. You, you must be doing well. I said, my, my, that's my wife's car. <laughs> I walked here. So, <laughs> so they're already trying to figure out, do you fit in to who we are? And what we do then, we create a culture of elitism, of having such an elite spirit that people have to have certain credentials to be a part of God's church. Brothers and sisters, that is one of the driving stakes into a dead and dying church, okay? So, pillar to church, get you a, a baby bottle and take you some, take you some, uh, some so sleeping pills and relax, and the sermon is 20 minutes, 15 minutes, 10 minutes. I preached at a church uh, in, on the East Coast, and uh, the, one of my uh, uh, deacons who had invited me to the church was his former church, and he had gone back to that church and invited me to come over to the church, and I, I preached a message, and my message was about 55 minutes. The pastor said, I can't believe people, I, I, he said, I only preach 10 minutes, five to, uh, 12 to 10 minutes every Sunday. I said, I don't clear my throat in 12 minutes. I mean, <laughs> anyway, but it's anyway, a whole other story. But, but, but God, God bless you, added to the body. So what does a, a God-fearing, God-filled, spirit-centered church become, become God's church? When, does, when do we take our hands off the church and we say, this is God's church? Okay. This is God's church. Regardless to what we do or how we do, but this church belongs to God. Can we actually say that Cornerstone Baptist Church belongs to God? I'm from Mississippi. I'm hard of hearing. I'm a country boy. I'm hard of hearing. Okay. So if, if this church belongs to God, then who are we accountable to but God? If the church is not doing what the church is supposed to do. And that is the church is not designed for us to come and just sit and do nothing and enjoy the sunshine of the blessings of all the things and nuances. It is for us to become disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ to carry out his ministry. Jot this down. The word disciple, again, we've been trying to unpack in that term. The word disciple means one who is in the process of becoming. One who is in the process of becoming. In other words, a, a disciple is one who is continually growing and becoming that which they have not been. Okay? And every day of our lives, we're becoming more and more and more and more and more like Christ until the day when he returns on his second coming. And the Bible says that we shall be like him in the moment of twinkle of an eye, and we shall be changed and lifted up and brought into the presence of God. But in the meanwhile, we are growing and growing and growing and growing. Jot this down. As we grow, we must go. Okay? As we grow, we must grow. Go. If you don't go, 
that means you ain't growing. That's why Jesus says, go ye therefore, not sit ye there on. Not you do not do anything, okay? Don't become a vegetable sitting in a place and just enjoy doing nothing. That is not the call of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. So then it gets to that church. That church, the church is all messed up. That church must die so that it can live. In other words, dead churches need to die so the church can live. Churches that are not functioning for the purpose of God's principles and God's direction, that church must die. We must die. So that church must die so that it can live. That church must embrace the Galatians 2, 20, and 21 principle, a model. That principle or that model is so critical for us to understand in relationship to what God said in accordance to Scripture that it tells us about what this model is that God informs us that our responsibilities is not to sit ye there on, but to go ye there for. Okay? We got to go. And the Galatians 2.20 uh, principle, and I want us to really capture that, it says, and I have been crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me, and the life I now live by faith, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate, that's very important, verse 21, I do not frustrate, I do not set aside the grace of God, for if righteousness could be uh, gained through the law, Christ died for nothing. So here, 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 here it is. If we don't embrace and become the crucified church, where in essence, Brandon, we have taken our hands off of the church and we've said, God, whatever you want us to do, we're going to do it. Okay? Whatever your will is, we hooked up with what you want. Okay? You just tell us what to do and we'll do it. Isn't it very sad today? that many people in our churches don't believe the Bible. Don't believe the Bible. The preachers preach, the pastors preach the Bible, and we're sitting there saying, I don't believe it. I ain't going to do it. I ain't going to do it. Pay my tithes? What? I ain't going to be no 10%? I don't know how to do that. Now, they're, they're, they're sitting in church and they're worshiping. Praise him, praise him. And in their hearts, they're saying, I'm not going to do it. Now, how do you know that? It's in our actions. Now, watch this. If we don't do it, and we don't do what God say do, and begin to reap the harvest that's out before us, then we lose a generation. And beloved, I don't know about you guys, but I watch news, and I read the newspapers and read the news articles, but I'm here to tell you that if we don't get with the program, and really get serious about this thing we call church, we are losing a generation. And the educational systems are contaminating the minds of our children because the foundation of their faith is not resting on the all-sufficient word of Almighty God. They are so mixed up as opposed to rooted and grounded in the truth of God's authority. So we want to be a be the crucified church. Let's say that. We want to be at Cornerstone, the crucified church. Repeat with me. Lord God, would you please kill us so we can live? You know, I love, uh, I'll never forget, I, I love the, the fact that the person was saying that they, this person was, uh, had died, and they said, wow, the person has died. The other person said, yes, he's dead, but he's living eternally with God. That's the church. That's the church. That's the church. That is the church. So when we die at CBCBC, Cornerstone Baptist Church, then we can live and abide in Christ. Once we die, then we can live and abide in in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, open your Bibles to John chapter 15, which is a very interesting treatment. John is the other gospel, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, the synoptic gospel. John is the gospel of the seven signs to enunciate and underscore the, the
the, the personality of the, the sufficiency of the Lord Jesus Christ. In John chapter 15, it deals with what it means to abide in Christ. I'm going to read a few verses here, beginning at verse 1. It says, I am the true vine, and my Father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch, that's, branch that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes so that it would be more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain, that word remain in the NIV is the word abide in the KJV. Abide in me and I will remain or abide in you. No branch can bear fruit of it by itself. It must abide or remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you abide or remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain or abide in me and I in him, uh, he will bear much fruit apart from me you can do nothing. So right there, that tells us that if we're not really abiding in him, when we go out to the various communities and we bring our flesh and not our faith, we bring our gossip and not our gospel, we bring our division and not our unity, we bring all the garbage and trash that's swept up in our life and go out into a community. And guess what they're going to see? They're going to see all the garbage and trash in our hearts. Okay? But if we want them to see Jesus and see what God has taken done in our life, you know, I stand amazed, Jim, every time I speak, every time I share. I have images in my mind, Brandon, of being a kid growing up in Law, Mississippi, being in a place where my dad was an alcoholic, we had nine people in a house that had five rooms in it. Many of us literally slept on top of each other. And when my dad was killed, hit by a train, uh, my dad died. My mother decided not to remarry, to where she would raise her kids and teach them what God is all about. My aunt, praise God, my aunt, my aunt Minnie, at a little Minnie Lee, took us to Sunday school. My uncle Johnny would come by and pick us up in the car and take us to Sunday school in church. And I, I remember sitting in the Sunday school classes as a kid, we were very, very, very poor, very poor, sitting in a Sunday school class and, and taking classes under the different deacons who taught me the Bible and taught me how to love God. I remember sitting in those classes and learning the scriptures and being in BYPU and the Sunshine Band and going to vacation Bible school and going to Sunday school and going to prayer meeting. I hated prayer meeting, all these prayer meetings, all these church meetings. I was at church. I was a church rat, a church mouse. My aunt fed all the preachers. The preachers ate off all the food. My aunt promised me if you clean the dishes up, I'll always save me some food because the preachers would eat like they were crazy. And I said, I'm not, I'm tired. She said, well, I'll save you something. So my aunt was a great was a great cook, a great baker. She could do just tremendous cook. All the preachers and stuff stayed in her house and stuff like that during the revival times. And all of that with the kid raising a housing project on the wrong side of the track. All of that by the grace and the magnificent, marvelous power of God that God did an incredible work in my life that God allowed me to stand what I'm standing today. And I have other friends of mine whose parents had everything, everything. I've gone to funeral after funeral after funeral after funeral after funeral after funeral. They had everything but the right thing. And beloved, we have the right thing. We have Jesus Christ. Can I get a witness? And if we have Jesus Christ, beloved, it behooves us to come out of these benches and go out there and bring people in and let them know that there is a fountain filled with blood that flows from Emmanuel's vein. Sinners plunge beneath that flood, lose all your guiltless stains, and be washed and cleansed by the power of the grace of God. And I guarantee you, beloved, we have to lock the doors to keep people from coming in because they would know that there's fresh water in this place. Not perfect people. Not perfect people. But people who are in the process as disciples are becoming what God would help us yet to become. That's what God is looking for. He's looking for imperfect people that will trust a perfect God to do a perfect work for his perfect plan. And when we do that, God would do a perfect work in our lives that we've never seen before because he would take the imperfections of who we are and use those imperfections and make us a better person that we've never ever seen before. And that's the mystery of God, that God takes nothing and do more with nothing than we can do with something. So abiding, the, an abiding church is a growing, fruitful church. And I went to Acts chapter 2, and I won't read that whole chapter, but that's a very good chapter, all 47 verses. 
but it's very powerful. But I just want to just walk up on this is when the Spirit of God came after they had prayed at Pentecost. And in verse, I'm going to pick up 40, 42 to 47, uh, when the, the believers came together in Acts 2, 42 to 47, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, uh, teachings, to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe, and many wonders and miraculous signs were done by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common, selling their possessions and goods. They must not have been Baptists. They were not Baptists selling their possessions and goods. They were not Baptists. They gave to anyone who had need, definitely not Baptists. Every day they they were not Baptists meeting together in the temple course. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere. Now that was a Baptist. Since their heart praising God and enjoying the favor of all people and the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. So God added daily there was daily saving growth. Daily saving growth. What would happen if we were to have in our church daily saving growth? That people were coming to Christ Every day, coming to Christ. Every day. Every day. You see, it doesn't take a program that we're designing here to win people to Christ. You know what it takes? It takes a person who has been submitted to Christ to lead people to Christ. And one of the things that we're going to learn by the grace of God, beloved, we're going to learn that everywhere we go, we are a signpost for God. At Walmart, Macy's, Wherever we go, we are a signpost for God. And we have the living gospel of Christ in us. And people are looking for the living word. I was at Walmart uh, walking through the, uh, getting, some, getting some, picking up some, uh, uh, some okra. Um, I like to get the okra and saute it. Some okra. So I was, I was in Walmart and I, I ran into a person um, that, that was just, and, well, I was talking to another pastor on the phone, and he, he was laughing. We were talking about God. He was saying about his message. We were just laughing. And I just said, oh, praise the Lord. And the gentleman turns around. And I said, he said, man, that's great. He smiled at me. So when he smiled, I went over to him. And he said, uh, he said man, that's really good. I said, praise God for your smile, man. What a blessing. And this is what the gentleman said to me. Standing in Walmart, over in the frozen, the freezing, the frozen area, Tears came in his eyes. He said, I was, I was once a preacher too. My first wife left me. My second wife left me. My third wife left me. And he broke down in tears. I grabbed him, put my arms around him, and tears just went down over my side. I said, here's a card. I knew a place that love to help broken people. And I said, that place is Cornerstone Baptist Church. I guarantee you, if you come here, you will hear a word, and you'll be blessed. And God will take all your stuff that's broken, and he will heal you and bring you to wholeness. And you can still love all those mistakes and errors in your life because God allowed you to suffer through that in order to give you a better testimony. Where there is no test, there is no money. You got to be tested. You got to be tested. If you're not tested, then you're not worthy to do what God would have you to do. Okay? All right. So, so when we stop doing church and start being, being church, God will grow us daily. So, it's time to open y'all get this? It's time to open. We're going to open up something here at our church, okay? Okay, Wilma? <laughs> We're going to open up something. It's time to open it up, okay? And get ready for it. we got to open it up. It's time to open the... Anybody want to guess? That's a good question. Great. You're a smart person. Wow. But that's not right, though. <laughs> What's the gates? No, that's not right. That's good. Anybody else? It's time. What's the name? The Wi Fi. <laughs> you're, you're, definitely a, you're definitely a millennial. This, that, 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 that's but a millennial. You're definitely a millennial, no doubt. It's time to open the book. Oh, now, you, now you're a brainiac. Okay, anybody else? Anybody else? Brandon, tell them how to do it, man. Come on, what, what is it, man? Just give it to Give us the truth. Lay it on us. 
The Bible says it's spiritual, spiritual birth. We have people who say that uh, Johnny becomes spiritual, spiritual. He's spiritual, very spiritual. No, we're not going to be that spiritual. It's time to open the nursery. <laughs> it's time to open the nursery. Now, I want you to get this now. This is so important. And I want you to get as many of these notes that you can. Get this now. When people come here, connect with them. Don't be running out to get to your car to beat the Methodists and the Catholics to the, to the food place because we know the Pentecostals are not going to get there. They're still having a shouting match. They get there next week, okay? Don't worry about them. <laughs> they be eating warmovers, okay? <laughs> okay? But the Catholics are going to get there first. The Methodists be next. The Presbyterians are right behind them, okay? And the elite Baptists are right in line. And Cornerstone, we ain't going to worry about that. What we're going to do, we're going to open the nursery. We're going to connect with people. Now, what do I mean by connecting with people? When you connect with people, the Holy Spirit will instruct you to go over to a person. My name is John. You meet a gentleman, and I always have gentlemen to go to gentlemen, ladies to go to ladies. My name is, my name is, my name is Robert. Hey, how are you doing? Well, wow, is this your first time coming here? It is? Wow, man. Great, man. Is this your daughter? Oh, great. Praise God. This is, this is, your, this is, your, this is your baby daughter? Oh, man. Wow, man. You, you are your I, baby daughter. Woo. Woo-hoo. You're yeah, great, man. All right. <laughs> so, 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 so you begin to connect with people. And then you can even, you can even go so far and say, you know, um, every so often my family go out and eat. Uh, would you like to come and go with us? We would like to take you out to eat. Wow. Thanks, Jim. I appreciate you taking me out to eat, man. I, I leave my wallet at home, Jim. Thank you. <laughs> Remember, I got my bedroom there now. That's my bedroom. That's the prophet's room. That's the upper room now. Remember, that's the prophet room, okay? So these are the things we want to do to be sensitive, not manipulative, to be genuine. Because people can tell if you mean it or if you don't. So if you don't mean it, don't do it. Don't follow my instructions. Follow God's instruction. Do it from your heart. And make it a habit to connect with people who come and visit us and come and invite them into a family that they do not have. And the more touches, the more touches a person receives, the more touches they get, the more touches they get, the more easier for them to become a part of our family. Touch them. Touch them. Shake their hand. Ask questions. Tell about yourself. Touch them. Let them know that you're not perfect, but we serve a perfect God. And then they'll come back. When they come back, remember who they are. Connect with them again and welcome them back. Thank you for coming. There's a young lady, a lady who is um, come to our church Sunday, and I'm going to visit her tomorrow. You'll be praying about her. And she loves hospitality. I told Eunice about her and told uh, 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 Celeste about her. And uh, who, who's Celeste? Who's doing the hospitality? Uh, uh, that's uh, Cindy. I'm going to tell Cindy about her. Ask Celeste, tell Cindy about her. So when she comes into the church, I'm going to say, okay? And I want to... Get over real quick. And she wants to serve God. She loves to cook. I like to eat. She loves hospitality. I love hospitality. All the things she does, I like food. She loves it. I love it. She loves it. I love it. She loves it. That's what we want to do. We want to let people know that you're in a good and safe place. And um, Brenda, you read the text right here. When you did that, the Lord said, I said, wow, look what God did. Um, I just love it. That's awesome. So that is the text you read. What a blessing that is. And so anyway, we've got to get the nursery together. I'm over my time. Hang with me a little bit, a few more minutes. We've got to get the nursery together, prepare the nursery. And the best nursery that must be prepared 
is the loving nursery and nurturing in our hearts. And I can genuinely say that um, as a person who has come to the city, I've been blessed by the members of my church who have prepared the nursery and allowed me to be in their heart. Make room in your heart for other people, regardless of what they have on, regardless of how they look, or regardless of what you think about them. Make room in your heart for them, and I guarantee you, it will transform your life. And that's what we want to do. We want to give them what God gave us. That's the blessings of Jesus Christ. All right, we stopped off here at this point here, and we're going to stop off here at that point here, and we'll get back uh, to this on our next time around or so. Uh, we did not go any further, but we will be taking a test on what I talked about tonight, so we will have a test on that next week. So uh, we'll get back to this and dealing with, uh, with Jesus in Luke 6, 9 through 30, 9, 39 through 40. Uh, Jesus spoke to them and said in a parable, can the blind lead the blind where they both fall into a ditch? A disciple is not above his teacher, but every one who is perfectly, is perfectly trained would be like his teacher. We are like our teacher, the Lord Jesus Christ. Are we not? Amen. All right. Any questions from anyone on anything? Any questions? Okay, let's... One good way to meet different people... Yes, sir. Don't sit in the same spot every Sunday. Mm -hmm. Go sit in different areas mm -hmm. throughout the church. Darlene, she does that. She'll come down. She puts my our Bibles down in different areas. And so we come and we sit in different areas mm -hmm. each week and we see different people. Mm -hmm. Instead of sitting in the same spot and, and seeing the same people every week, if you sit at different spots throughout each time you come, you meet new people every time. That is a, that's a great strategy. That is an awesome strategy. That's great, Jim. You shared that with me many times. Anyone else? Anyone else? Any questions? This is very simple. Your assignment is to read the scripture text associated with this. Read as much as you like, but definitely text. And then when you have read it, when you turn this in, just say 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. And if I don't get all 100%, I'm going to give it back to you. 100%. 100%. I would not accept 91%, 97%, 92.5%. I'm only accepting 100%. 100%. All right, okay. Um, yes, that, that, that is a great strategy. Eunice, I'm going to have you to pray for us about going over into the, uh, the communities and stuff like that. We've been working on that together. And uh, pray that God would help us to die as a congregation, and not just to keep eating the word every Sunday, eating the word.